Hi guys, how are you? Mind this one, Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macro Economics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro. Patreon.com slash BKC. So, Fed Pal tells 60 Minutes he's not out of ammunition to fight the recession. <laughs> what the fuck? He's not out of ammunition. What did the first ammunition? Do you realize that we went from uh, a balance sheet on the Fed of 3.8 trillion to seven? Do you realize we spent a trillion dollars in a month? We didn't do that in all of 2009. Do you realize that? That's that's 4.2 trillion. Do you realize that the Fed has already told us and the Treasury has told us that we're going to spend three trillion by June? It's another two. So that's going to be assuming that the Fed balance sheet, which you won't, but assuming the Fed balance sheet is stays at seven, and we go from uh, one trillion to three trillion, that's going to be six point two trillion. Uh, actually, no, seven point two trillion in three months. When Trump was telling you it's a liberal hoax, when Trump was telling you it's just the flu. And I was telling you no. I told you on my Twitter, this is going to be a disaster, a, a socioeconomic disaster. I told you this in January. I told you this in February. I turned bearish in September. Market kept going up and up and up and up and up. What did the Fed tell you? The Fed told you that this is uh, the, the lowering of interest rates in July was a mid-cycle adjustment in the middle of a bull run. September, they told you the repos were just temporary. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. And then they kept raising the limit of the repos. September, October, November, December, January. They told you it's not QE. It was QE. They told you in January. The Fed told you in January. No rate further rate cuts for the next three years. How did that work out? Not very good. So you see, they don't know what they're talking about. They don't have a clue as to what they're talking about. How many people have sat here? And told me over the years about MMT how government debt is our savings. Really? So tell me how much of this $4.2 trillion is our savings. It's not. It's our liabilities. Sure, you got $600 of crumbs. Okay. Sure, you got some extension and unemployment that you paid into or you, your, your employer. Ah, that's great. Our savings? You think you think that's that's <laughs> you think that's 4.2 trillion? Hmm? That that that's what it costs, really? Who got the 4.2 trillion? Top five percent. That's who got it. I told you we have a savings bubble. What is a savings bubble? It's too many dollars in savings in the hands of the few. It's not a debt problem. It's a savings problem. Who are they bailing out? You? Yeah. They're going to use you as the as the, the marketing. Yeah, we're doing this for the people. Venezuela has been doing it for the people too. What was I bitching about Bernie Sanders? We can have free this and free that and free this and free that and free, 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 free. This guy Trump is uh, his Sanders on steroids. That's what he is. Where are, the, where are the libertarians? Where is the personal responsibility, the fiscal hawks? Where are they now? Buy gold, buy silver. Now that they should say buy gold, buy silver. Where are they? Pfft, they're gone. They vanished. This is not 2008. This is not a banking crisis where it's interbank. Fuck it, whatever they print. doesn't matter. This is a real economic problem. And this is why I said MMT and Austria and everything in between and all these economic models and theories and bullshit, it's crap. It doesn't work. Because in the real world, real bad shit happens. And you don't know what real bad shit is going to be. I don't know. I never knew about coronavirus. 
Was I among the first to recognize it as a problem? Yes, I was. I knew of nobody that sat here and talked about coronavirus as being a deep socioeconomic problem. Nobody. I asked my friends, what the fuck, man? Why is the market going up? Don't they realize what this means? Do they not understand it? Well, the market is a forward-looking indicator. What fucking forward-looking indicator? It was going up all in January. We have 400 cases in the U.S. All the way to March 4th, we have 400 cases. We're infested with fucking coronavirus. Deaths everywhere. Did they go back and test all the people that died in January, in December, January, February, March? Did they go back and test them? No, we don't have enough test kits. We don't have enough test kits. The greatest economic superpower in the history of mankind, 5% of global population producing 25% of global GDP, the fuckers of all fuckers, and we don't we we can't figure out how to how to get our hands on test kits. The entrepreneur company of the world, and we can't figure out how to come up with test kits. And here we are, and you're telling me about how MMT is this great, wonderful, fix-all ideology, how we're just going to print money and create an economy. You cannot do it. I've told you this a billion times. No government can print value for a currency. None. It's not possible. Those of you who wish to live off the government need to remember that the government lives off of you. The government has no... Uh, economy to, to give you. It doesn't have anything. It doesn't make anything. It doesn't produce anything. It doesn't do anything. Can't print value for a currency. No government can't. Can. It's only the private sector that can do it. So when you're printing in excess of what the economy has the ability to grow, you have screwed the pooch. Big time. Big time. So you think you're, you're thinking to yourself, well, yeah, but we, we just printed, you know, uh, all these trillions of endless dollars, and the, and the dollar's still strong. Of course it is. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go out and uh, buy what? China, Russia, Africa, India, Brazil, South America, Middle East. What are you gonna go buy? Of course the dollars are gonna funnel into the U.S. and it's going it's gonna, it's gonna maintain the value of the dollar for now, for now. Venezuela was kicking up, kicking ass all the way towards the end. And then it snapped. Goodbye. Well, this can't happen. Really? It can't happen? <laughs> I guess the coronavirus couldn't happen either. Right? I guess uh, the fact that we can't find masks to give to people, it, it cannot happen in the U.S. We're too powerful. We're too wonderful. We can't produce effective tests kits we, you think it's in anybody's interest to go back and test of all the people that actually died from coronavirus no no we're ramping up testing my father died from coronavirus he went into the hospital three times and they didn't test him even though he had all the symptoms they didn't test him till the third time it was too late and he died so don't tell me about coronavirus it's a rapid inflammation of your internals that the, the body goes in freakazoid mode and everything just goes in flames. Done. So ra so fast, so rapidly. I was talking to him 8 o'clock at night. A few hours later, he was fine. A few hours later, he's in an incubator. Ventilator. Incubator. Into, in a, on a ventilator. A couple of days later, he died. What do you know about coronavirus? Nothing. Nobody knows anything about it. It's a novel virus. Nobody understands it yet. But apparently, the Trump bots do. They know everything about it. They, they're marching with their guns up in fucking City Hall. Woo, yeah, let's open up America. Really? Did we ever lock down? Well, yeah, we did. Really? This is a lockdown? You've been to China, my friend? I've been. I know what a lockdown looks like. Go to Asia. They'll explain to you what a lockdown is. They'll tell you all about wearing masks, 
testing, tracing. They'll tell you all about it. They'll explain it to you. What, we didn't know how to do that? No, they were just lying to you. They were lying to you all of January, all of February, most of March. We didn't start testing until March 16th. And now they're telling you to drink Clorox and put a fucking light up your ass. And they're going to print money and they have a lot more ammunition, a lot more trillions of dollars to give to themselves for the top 5% while you get the finger. With 30, 40 million people going to be unemployed, 25% is what he says here. Unemployment can be as high as 25% while the economy could contract 30% or more in April and June quarter. Wow. Wow. What an insight. Remember the... uh, in July, this is a mid-cycle adjustment of interest rates. Yeah. Yeah, that worked that great. And that's the difference. That's the difference between me and everything else. I am original. I don't sit here and pretend I have a crystal ball. I don't pretend to sit here and, and have some model that I follow or some uh, theory that I follow. Okay? I, I That's why it's... What I do is called real macro, real world shit, right? It's the real macroeconomics because it applies in the real world. That's the point, dynamic analysis. And you guys been sitting here, you know, your MMTers, oh, you know, government debt is our savings. Really? Tell me about your savings now with the $6 trillion running around. Whose savings is it? Yours? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. You're just sitting there uh, getting crumbs. And every single last dime of those crumbs that you're collecting are going to be spent. And it's going to become profit savings for the corporations. And that's going to go into the savings bubble. And that's why you have the stock market going up. And if you look at the stock market, it's only five stocks that are going up and everything else is a disaster area. And if you don't believe me, well, open up your 401k. Tell me how that looks. Looks like a city in Syria. That's what it looks like. It's a disaster area. It's all red. How do I know that? How do I know that? Because I can read a chart. I know what's going up, and I know what's not going up. You think this is a V-shaped recovery? This is five stocks. That's what you're looking at. This is not a V-shaped recovery. This is five stocks. That's what you're looking at. And this is going to go like this. And then all of you little MMTers, when you're sitting here screaming and, oh, it's the end of the world, because you will get there. Now you got the nibblers, you got the buy the dippers, you got I'm buying distressed assets and all this bullshit. Buy when there's blood in the street and all these idiots. And every single one of them has gotten wiped out, okay, because it, it never recovered. This is This is more of a... Uh, of a reality of what actually happened <laughs> for the by the dippers okay the small caps are telling you more of what reality is versus the nasdaq but uh, the reality is that when all of you people are finally like oh this is horrible this is never going to recover this is a great depression and steroids and then i'll be telling you you know what it's time to buy This is the time, and then the market will keep going down, and I'll be like, no, no, it's time to buy. It's time to buy. And you'll be like, no, Nick doesn't know what he's talking about, just like you were telling me in September, October, November, December, January. Oh, the market's going up. Oh, the market's going up. And now you're sitting here seeing what reality is. Nick, you're not an economist, really. What economist called what I called? Nobody. Nobody. I've accomplished every single task that I set out when I first started this service. Every single one. I said, I'm going to call the top and then I, I'm going to be done. I'm going to, I'm going to prove MMT wrong uh, when I figured out that MMT because initially I started to prove MMT right, but that wasn't possible. And then I said, ah, I'm going to prove MMT wrong. It's wrong. And it is wrong. And you can all see it. And I never thought in a million years that I'm going to have such a wonderful opportunity to prove it to you all. Never, 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 never did I think that that was going to be the case. That you're going to have the entire global economy, the number one, two, three, and four economies on the planet, shut down, global trade out the fucking window, government printing money, Fed printing money, and you will have no economic 
impact from those dollars that are being created. None. You would see with your own eyes that those $6 trillion are not your savings. They're your liabilities, and it's the savings for the top 5%. I told you this. I told you stocks would go up because that's what deficits do. They pump up asset prices. They don't grow the economy. And that's exactly what's happening. Exactly what's happening. If it was not for this $6 trillion, you know where the stock market would be today? Do you? It'll be 70% down. This is far worse than it was in 2008. And if you sit here and you're thinking that, oh, we're going to have a vaccine tomorrow, or we're going to open up and everything is going to go back to January 2020 with 3.4% unemployment, everybody's going to be doing their thing, you're delusional. If you think earnings per share are going to rise anytime soon, you're delusional. Look at the M2 money supply. Skyrocketing. Where's the economy? Non-existent. You are stuck with this Fed, with this government that's pumping out trillions like it's candy. And MMT telling you all this bullshit how it's our savings. You're stuck with these people, with these incubator economists. We're just going to keep telling you that, yeah, we have more ammunition. We can just keep pumping out trillions of dollars, and we're going to grow the economy. And, and, and a bunch of liars, right? That's who you're stuck with. And the reality of the situation is the economy does not go into a recession because of uh, the Fed, and it doesn't come out of the uh, recession or depression in this case because of the Fed. It's not why. It's a big fucking mistake to believe that. Economies are living, breathing entities. Okay? Can they be assisted by money printing? Yes, they can. Absolutely, it can be assisted, but at a cost. At a cost. There's always a cost to everything. It's, nothing is free. But the cost that we're paying right now all these endless of trillions of dollars is too grave. You're not going to get an economy. The economy is never going to grow at the same rate as the money supply. And that, my friend, is the beginning of the end. That's the, the snap moment. And that's why I said, I told you this again. I told you straight up, the more money you print, the more you need to print. That's why in 2009, we had a trillion dollars in all of uh, our deficits for that year. And we did it in a month. In a fucking month, we spent a trillion. We're not even counting about the fucking Fed QE, 3.2 trillion. Forget about that. And you're going to need more trillions and more trillions. And it's like the cross in a hospital or a half moon, whatever it is, your religion. doesn't matter. Right? They're going to tell you, yeah, yeah, this is, you, you got better because you were praying or whatever you believe you believed in. Not because of science. They're going to tell you that they recovered the economy because of the Fed stepping in and pumping in trillions of dollars to stimulate the economy. Bullshit. It's not why. The economy is going to recover when it's time to recover. And it will. It always does. But it doesn't mean it's going to recover in the way you think it's going to recover. That we're going to go back to this same uh, kind of economy that, that used to be. Forget it. Forget it. Nuh uh not gonna happen. Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about all those those fantasies. This is end game MMT, my friends. End game MMT because the whole entire planet is gonna figure out the deficits don't work. When this is all said and done, you're gonna start seeing a lot different kinds of economics. And that's the trick about uh being a real economist. That you are able to understand what's happening when it's happening and understand how it's always going to evolve it's always going to be something different in 2008 they told you we're going to hyperinflate nope didn't happen didn't happen it was an interbank problem nothing like it is today nothing they were wrong then now they're telling you yeah no 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 we, we have to print and we, we should print more ah wrong again <laughs> every fucking time they get it wrong so anyway, I'll stop the video here. You guys heard enough of me, but 
You know, it's very frustrating when I'm sitting here and I'm be, I've been telling you for years, you know, and all I get is these idiots that just keep coming in, posting up stupid things, sending dumb messages, and they don't have a clue as to what they're talking about. So you guys can go out and quote everybody and give both sides of the story and, you know, to be fair this and to be fair that and come up with all your bullshit doesn't matter. You don't know what you're talking about. You'll never know what you're talking about. And that's why you got to sit there and quote other people. And that's why you got to sit there and give both sides of the stories and say there's too many moving parts and there's too many this and this. No, there isn't. None of that stuff. The economy is going to recession when they feel like it and they come out of the uh, recession when they feel like it. And the money printing can help, but it doesn't do shit about recovering or putting an economy into a recession. Sorry. Bye-bye.